it's a very exciting time at the moment for the treatment of ovarian cancer and there are a number of classes of drugs that are showing promising activity. Amongst these, PARP inhibitors are really starting to change clinical practice. So PARP inhibitors are now licensed in ovarian cancer. Alaparib or Limpasa was approved in Europe and also in the US uh, for different indications in the maintenance setting for platinum sensitive disease for BRCA mutation associated ovarian cancer in Europe and the FDA approval is in recurrent ovarian cancer, BRCA mutated ovarian cancer. More recently, in April 2015, Rucaparib received FDA breakthrough designation to treat patients with BRCA mutated ovarian cancer. So this is now becoming um, part of clinical practice and we need to know how best to use these drugs. The Aerial 2 study um, uh, assessed a PARP inhibitor, an oral PARP inhibitor called Rucaparib. And this study was of over 200 women with platinum sensitive ovarian cancer. And the aim of this study was to look at the activity not only in BRCA uh, mutated ovarian cancer, but to try and predict whether there's a group that don't have abnormal BRCA genes that could also benefit from these drugs. And that would have wider implications so that more women would benefit from, from PARP inhibitors. So this study um, looked prospectively at a uh, molecular signature, a molecular assay um, called um, homologous recombination deficient assay. So the biomarker defined groups were as follows. There was the BRCA mutation group and then a group called BRCA-like. And these are patients um, that um, show markers of homologous recombinant deficiency. And then there was the biomarker negative group. And what the results show is that there was a significant difference between the progression-free survival from the BRCA mutated group and the BRCA light group compared to the biomarker negative group. In fact, the hazard ratio was 0.22 and 0.67 respectively. And what that means is that some patients um, which don't have um, BRCA mutations but actually have markers of homologous recombinant deficiency can actually benefit from the PARP inhibitor recabarib. This assay is being tested further within the Aerial 2 study and also in a phase 3 clinical trial called Aerial 3, which is looking at platinum sensitive maintenance treatment of recabarib, and those results are awaited. <laughs> The main question is how we're going to best integrate PARP inhibitors in the patient's pathway with chemotherapy and also other targeted therapies like anti-angiogenic agents. There are a number of challenges that we need to overcome. Firstly, how should we best treat women with um, uh, PARP inhibitors? When should we treat them? Should we treat them as a treatment for platinum sensitive disease or indeed platinum resistant disease or as maintenance therapy? And how best should we use them as combination treatments, for example? And there are a number of ongoing trials addressing this. The main challenge as well is what do we do when patients become resistant to PARP inhibitors like Rucaparib? 